Mercedes has just unveiled the 2024 Challenger, and it looks absolutely stunning. Combining black with the silver and grey has made the car look striking. But what matters is the conceptual dissection underneath the W15, as all these design changes are poised to make the car a lot faster than it was back in 2023. With this in mind, could we see Mercedes challenging Red Bull in 2024 on a frequent note? And more importantly, what changes has Mercedes incorporated for the W15 on both a mechanical and aerodynamic level? Under Allison's technical leadership, Mercedes has unveiled the team's 2024 Challenger, a car that I would regard as a unique experience. Wolf refers to the W15 to be a complete relaunch, and our first glimpse suggests that the Silver Arrows have moved towards a much more conventional aerodynamic philosophy, apparent from the reminiscent downwashing side pods profile. But taking a deep dive shows many intricate design choices that separates the Mercedes car from the Red Bull-led path, promising a leap in performance. So what exactly has changed on the W15? Well, let's start with the most interesting part, the side pods. While the team has converged towards a downwashing concept, there still seems to be both the undercut and overcut in play. Starting from the front, the side pods inlet is very unique. It seems to be an evolution of the design Allison tested out on the W14. Lower structure of the inlet being in front creates the undercut, resulting in an increase of gap between the channel section that develops between the lower side pods and the floor resulting in bringing greater flow and quality airflow towards the car's rear. The upper side pods is much more similar to the Red Bull design, despite carrying a slight water slide effect, uses pressure difference to channel high energy airflow towards the car's rear. The overall size of the side pods is relatively small, showing that Mercedes has been able to work on improving the car's aerodynamic efficiency. Coming to the car's front, the front wing has a very distinct design language when compared with rival ideas. The only similarity to be seen there is the nose positioning, having it placed on the second plane, allowing high quality airflow to flow through and under the first plane towards the central underfloor and car's rear. The design of the TAP3 elements shows aerodynamic intricacy, with the front wing's inboard section trying to provide inwash towards the car's front suspension through to the side pods and floor, while the outboard section of the front wing combined with the slot gaps joining the end plate purely focuses on generating significant outwash towards the front tyres and outwards, playing a significant role in terms of tyre degradation and underfloor performance. Taking a look at the floor profile, the upper floor in this case, we can see a higher Venturi tunnel roof. This suggests the Venturi channels are deep, allowing for the accommodation of much greater airflow. We can see a raised leading edge, followed by different fence profiles, a clear change inspired from the Red Bull design. Taking a look at the top body aerodynamics, the engine cover has not seen that much of a change, has a similar profile to that of the W14, having an aggressive bonnet and an engine cover. Cooling louvers are entirely moved on from the side pods up to the engine cover, meaning significant revisions to internal cooling components has been made as a result of the side pods redesign. The halo has a slight redesign, putting emphasis on aerodynamic efficiency, the air scoop is very much similar to the design of the W14. Moving to the car's back, the rear wing has a different profile. The main plane seems to be less loaded for a medium downforce wing as per my assumption. The DRS flap is also a bit skinny compared to the W14, showcasing obvious improvements made around aerodynamic efficiency. From the renders, we can clearly see that Mercedes has implemented an aggressive cutout on the rear wing's end plate, focusing on shedding every bit of possible drag. From the looks we have had, the beam wing does not seem to be that much different to that of the W14, but still might be less loaded. The unavailability of clear rear pictures gives us very few information about the W15's diffuser, but changes made to the car's mechanical platform reveals key improvements around the car's diffuser. Speaking of, let's talk suspension. Mercedes has kept its faith on pushrod suspension for the front. In comparison, we can see a little bit more angle between the upper wishbone triangles, suggesting the addition of increased anti-dive. The lower wishbone is fairly flat across the two inboard mountings, meaning that it doesn't offer much to any anti-dive characteristics. Similar to other cars on the grid, the steering link is in tandem with the lower wishbone's forward leg, which is a design choice made to minimize the negative aerodynamic effect of having a separate component within the flowing airstream. Moving to the car's rear suspension, Mercedes has made changes here, opting for a push rod suspension over the formerly used pull rods. The upper wishbones, similar to the car's front, has an angle, creating the anti-squat effect. 
Anti-dive and anti-squat allows for a much more stable mechanical platform, aiding in consistent aerodynamic performance in terms of downforce generation. Changing from pull rods to push rods have provided Mercedes with a critical aerodynamic advantage, being able to allow as clean of an airflow as possible towards the car's coke bottle area and rear end. The push rods themselves seem to be a shallower design, suggesting key design changes being made to the gearbox housing design. From the recent updates we have received from the factory, Mercedes has made changes to the gearbox design, making its overall form factor shorter when compared with previous iterations. This has allowed Mercedes to improve the usable area of the diffuser section in terms of downforce generation, resulting in the W15 having a much more stable rear end, satisfying another of Hamilton and Russell's demands. Other than aerodynamic and mechanical revisions, significant improvements have been made around the car's power unit, pointed out by the design changes being made to the car's side pods and engine cover, resulting in relocation of cooling and electronic components. From what we have heard from Bricksworth, the new design philosophy opted on for the W15 has allowed the power unit engineers to place the radiators and electronic cooling parts in a manner which has resulted in the power unit performance, both in terms of horsepower and reliability. All these improvements on the aerodynamic, mechanical and power unit divisions confirms one thing. Wolf was not kidding about a major revamp back in 2023, and the term complete relaunch seems to be very accurate. When talking about how the winter cycle progressed, and how much of an improvement the W15 will be, the Austrian went on to say, We know we have a mountain to climb to fight at the very front. There are no miracles in this sport, admitted co-owner Wolf, but our ambition and determination are strong. Since charting this new course, development has progressed well. We had several items on our priority list for this car. We will soon see if we've made the step we've aimed for. This is very different, not only on the aerodynamic surfaces, but mainly underneath. There are so many mechanical changes that we have done which we hope are going to translate into more performance, more predictability and a car that the drivers can really push. We'll see it next week in Bahrain. Following the W15's launch, Allison has shared his insight on the W15, mentioning that the major focus during winter development was to provide the drivers with a stable platform with enough downforce to provide corner attacking and confidence while working on improving aerodynamic efficiency. Further adding to this matter, the technical director went on to say, A big focus has been on improving the previous car's unpredictable rear axle. We have worked hard to ensure that both axles, but particularly the rear axle, retain better control of the tyre than on the W14. There's also been some housekeeping on areas in which we had room for improvement, including the DRS effect and pit stop performance. With this current generation of cars, so much of the performance comes from how the floor interacts with the roads, whether or not a car is effective is down to how well that floor is permitted to behave aerodynamically. The W15 has presented a complete shift, going down in a proven route with different interpretations. What's your first impression regarding the W15's design? We're very much into your thoughts and perspectives in the comments section down below. And on your way down, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified of our future uploads to keep yourselves up to date about the 2024 Formula 1 season.